All right. Well, <laughs> happy Memorial Day and welcome to another Consults Over Coffee. I'm Dr. Michael Jones, and I'm joined today by Todd Woodson, who is a man who is known to many in the Richmond area and who wears a lot of hats in this town. Um, as a musician, um, as what you've been on faculty at VCU and, and U of R, right? It, it, uh, I'm a staff member. Yeah. I, I won't call it faculty, but I, 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 on the music staff of the departments of choreography for both of those. For a long time at VCU, right? Like 20 years? Uh, over 20 years, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how it goes by. And then you do a lot of animal rights advocacy, as I recall. Is that right? That's correct. I, I am a uh, volunteer policy advisor for the Humane Society. Yeah, that's fabulous stuff. And then, and then also, um, you've been active in your in in the Oregon Hill Neighborhood Association, mm -hmm. yeah. and and have been an advocate for Monroe Park, which is what we're here to talk about today. And I think probably for nature in general is probably a broader advocacy title. Is that fair? Yeah, I've been I've been blessed with. Um some recognition from the Sierra Club and uh, the city council actually gave me a, a, an award back in 2005 for my work with uh, city parks. That's fabulous. And we're here today to talk about a park. We're here to talk about Monroe Park, right? Right in the midst of, of the VCU campus. And that's a piece of land that's been around for a long time. And I, I reached out to you. I, I ride through there a couple times a week. And I've just been, my sense is, has been that that's a piece of land that's going backwards in the last couple of years. Um, certainly fewer trees. The trails that they've put in seem largely washed out and, and or spread over places they shouldn't be spread over after it rains. Yeah. And, and can you, can you kind of, for folks listening to this, sort of give us a history of what's transpired there? Well, I'll go back to 2002, um, and I was president of the uh, Oregon Hill Neighborhood Association at the time. Um, the city was in a, a different form of government. It was not a strong mayor. It was a, a city manager's type of government. Well, I was contacted by the Parks Department to see if our neighborhood association would support using Monroe Park as a parking facility up to 43 buses uh for different different things and uh of course my first reaction was and the, and the people were really nice from the parks department when they asked um but you know obviously the answer to that was this is our most historic and oldest city park uh 1851 was when the city acquired this land. It was in Henrico County at the time. And it was the, the wild West End, you know, not that much had, <laughs> uh, had been built there. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I, the thought to me personally was that using this as a parking facility uh, w was just a travesty and should not be done that the park needed needed uplifting, needed the facelifting. And um, so I held uh, a town hall meeting at St. Andrew's Church. And uh, it just it turned out that some influential people showed up, uh, one being Bill Panley, who was second district councilman at the time. And uh, it resonated. Uh, the message resonated that that no, this should not be a parking uh, facility. This should be a, a, a celebrated urban green space. So he uh, put together the, uh, actually there had been an earlier group that, that was not successful in getting a master plan, a usable master plan together, but he decided to reconstitute the Monroe Park Advisory Council. And with, community members from different neighborhoods, the Fan, uh, Oregon Hill, Presswood, Jackson Ward, uh, uh, Carver. And 
So we got together uh, in 2003. Uh, we were appointed uh, for three uh, by city council for three year terms. Well, we worked and worked and worked and and really couldn't come to to an agreement. VCU had long wanted the trees out. About forty. Uh, uh, fully mature and very healthy and very beautiful uh, trees. Uh, they decided they wanted them out. Now you ask yourself, what on earth would somebody want to put a, a beautiful tree canopy in an urban green space at risk? Um, there were people in the park that certain powers to be VCU, uh, the city decided they didn't want in the park. Um, is that, is that the, largely the group of the, the homeless folks that? Well, you know, they, they use that moniker homeless. Okay. It, it's almost as, as, as derogatory, you know, um, these people were, there, there were, uh, certainly there were some homeless people there, but there is a, a large community that lives on Franklin street in, further downtown some are uh have cognitive disabilities some um some of those people that were were using the park a lot were uh uh, uh probably uh, underemployed um you know it was just a great place that you could meet and uh the police weren't going in they weren't doing anything but still it was a very very low crime you, you you can look up the calls for service. There was very little crime in that park. Um, there was one murder in the park in 1958. Dr. Dodson was murdered, and that was never solved. But in in recent times, no, there was not a lot of crime in the park. Right. Um, but uh, certain as certain people can be uh, prejudiced against people. Uh, there was a decision made to try to displace those. And um, that's where the conservancy comes in. And Alice McGuire Massey, uh, who was a member of the, uh, and let me backtrack a minute, getting back to the Monroe Park uh, Advisory Council. This is before the, there was any conservancy. Um, VCU came in and suggested that we cut these trees down. And I said, over my dead body, you know, I will, you know, I'll chain myself to a tree before you'll cut it down. Um, because there was just no reason, you know, it was obvious, uh, you know, that it was obvious what they were, what they were wanting to do. What was uh, the thought that by, by removing some of the canopy, it would make the environment less appealing to the folks that were spending time there? Well, let me answer that, Mike, by saying, uh, go sit in the park on a hot day right. in the summer, right by the fountain there. Right, and it's you, wide and open. It, it's wide open <laughs> and you're flat in the sun. And yeah. before that, it was, it was on a 95 degree day, it would be 75 degrees because of those beautiful trees. It was just a <clears throat> fabulous, fabulous facility. Yeah. But so... There was there was contention there in the fact that uh, certain members wanted uh, of the of the advisory council wanted to take trees out, certain didn't. Um, when the the planning director at the time, who was Rachel Flynn, uh, was advised of the situation, and she was like, "Cut the trees down! What are you crazy?" Um, so she arranged to have a group. Uh, from Northern Virginia uh, called Roadside and Harwell, which uh, it was a planning group. And they came in to help facilitate the making of this master plan. It cost the city $700,000. And we reached out to the community and we came up with a, what I consider to be a excellent historically based historically sensitive, community sensitive, uh, and community vetted master plan. 
So, uh, and it was a $6 million master plan and the city was saving up the money for it. And then, uh, and then after, after the master plan was approved by city council, uh, Alice McGuire Massey, who was a member of the advisory council comes up with the idea where she's going to put a nonprofit corporation together and lease the park for a dollar a year for 30 years. It sounds crazy, but behind closed doors, she was making all these deals. And uh, the agreement was she would come up with $3 million or the conservancy, the incorporated nonprofit, Monroe Park Conservancy would come up with $3 million to match the city's $3 million. And, um, and here's where it gets really shady, really shady. They, uh, that was 2014. And uh, when they were awarded the lease from city council, then the fundraising began. Now they had to come up with $3 million to, to match. Essentially the city was doing everything underground, all the infrastructure, Monroe uh, Park and Service, he was doing everything above ground. Well, a couple of years came by and it stalled out. They figured, I think the city was thinking because Miss Massey, who is the great, great granddaughter of Hunter Holmes McGuire, which they've named the VA hospital out of, he was a notorious racist. Um, but she, Obviously, she lives on Monument Avenue right there at the Lee statue. You know, she's obviously of a social ranking in Richmond society that and and I guess the city felt she had access to society's money. Well, after a couple of years, it became clear that uh, she was falling short. She was failing and she did get uh two or, or 1.9 million i think uh in in funds but there was that 1.1 million dollars they could not they could not get uh uh corporate or uh, private funding for um you know they got money from dominion dominion she made a deal with dominion where they built this awful gazebo right there at uh at uh, uh, Laurel and uh, Main Street. And her deal was she was gonna put in an illuminated Dominion Energy sign. Well, we fought that off in the, uh, in the planning commission and that never happened, but it was, it was terrifying to think that somebody would put a illuminated Dominion Energy sign in Richmond's most historic oldest park. Well, anyway, so back to that $1.1 million. She's short the money. They can't start the renovation until she gets that 1.1 million. So she goes to the bank. Now, I've been told that this was SunTrust, but I, I can't confirm that because it's not on their tax documents. Nonprofit uh, 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 corporations have to uh, publicly disclose their uh, Form 990s, uh, which will tell you their they're where they're getting their money from you know, what they're doing with it um so she ended up now you or I, I i don't know about you mike you know you might be able to get a unsecured 1.1 million dollar loan i don't think the bank would look at me and in in and it'd be agreeable to that sort of circumstance <laughs> um but you know it was uh uh, I didn't know very much about unsecured loans. I know that they are, are pretty high interest loans, but they gave the conservancy a $1.1 million wow. loan that was unsecured, no collateral. Well, the renovation started because all the money was there and immediately uh, there was a hemorrhaging of money. Um, Selena Cuffey Glenn was the CAO at the time. She was funneling in money 
secretly, uh, quietly through uh, the first, we found out she was taking money from uh, fifth district infrastructural funds. Now this is in the second district where Monroe Park is, but it doesn't matter because parks are generally uh, the dominion of all, you know, all the, all the districts, you know, all districts use them. And then uh, a, a real, real weird thing happened. Um, and I believe it was in November of uh, 2017, um, uh, the treasurer of the Monroe Park Conservancy, a man named Matthew Stanley, was hired by the Richmond Department of, uh, 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 by Richmond Public Schools to be outreach director. And then three months later, a uh, CIP fund audit found that uh, a lot, I, I forget what the, what the, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars, I forget what the exact figure was, had been uh, funneled from Richmond Schools Building Fund to, uh, to go into Monroe Park for, for over uh, overages of, of, of what was going on there. Now the Conservancy had hired this group called Three North, which is a local uh, design firm. They came out with $900,000. Uh, that's what they ended up being paid for this. And things kept getting churned. They kept adding uh, a water feature or, or you know, just to keep churning it and make, making more money. And this drove up the price. And frankly, the, the, the design work, uh, the planning was very poor. Um, in the original master plan, we had no intention of removing the substrata from the, uh, from the pathways. It was just gonna be concrete under there. And then you, we would add the, the, the top uh, soil and they decided to remove all that. Now that was very costly and very uh, environmentally unfriendly. Taking all that concrete, putting it in a in a, a landfill somewhere, and that fatal combination of removing that concrete substrata and removing all these trees made it just obvious that these pathways were going to fail, and that's what happened. And uh, back to the social aspect of the renovation, um, not only did they remove these trees to dissuade people uh, from mostly people of color from coming in and using the park, but they also removed all the public restroom facilities. Now this is a 7.5 acre park and you need, if people are gonna be out there enjoying this park, children, uh, uh, students, seniors, they're going to need to use restroom facilities. Yeah. Um, you know, it, whoops, there it doesn't are. make any, yeah, I'm sorry, I had a little notice there. Um, it doesn't make any sense at all um, to, to take those out and put in a coffee uh, a restaurant which would make you even want to go to the bathroom more. <laughs> so, um, so logic wasn't, wasn't adhered to here. And now we're in a position where things have failed to a, 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 an immense proportion. The, uh, the, the pathways wash into the sewer, which is an environmental factor there. Um, you've got the, you know, with all the trees gone, uh, and, and other trees, when they compacted those pathways, um, that damaged a lot of trees. So there are a lot of unhealthy, unhappy trees in that park now as well. Um, and Some of those paths are closed off now, right? It, yeah. Yeah. You've actually got signs that have condemned those pathways now. Uh, the fountain is broken now. They spent, I don't know how many thousands on that. The, the fountain's not working. 
And the, the worst thing is, one of the worst things is that you can't get any information from, because they are a private group. They're a 501c3, but you, they do not respond to answers. And they actually, the treasurer, Stanley and Massey, both lied to me and uh, another man when we asked for the Form 990 uh, for last year. They said it wasn't available. Well, I had to go to the IRS and file a, a Form 13990 to, to get that information. And when I got it, um, it, it was obvious there were financial problems. They, they put less than 30,000 into the park uh, last year. Uh, and they do have an agreement, which has been with the city for years, that uh, the maintenance of the park is done by VCU. So it doesn't cost the city anything. And it, it hasn't for decades, but um, the problem was they had made, it, it said 170,000. We can't figure where, who donated 170,000, but out of that 170,000, they put less than 30,000 back into the park. So right now the city is facing an obvious decision that they've got to get rid of this, this conservancy. And they've got a, we've got a good parks department now. We didn't at the time that the uh, lease was given, but we've got a great parks director now. Um, the problem is they still owe over half a million dollars of that unsecured loan. So if they are kicked out of this park- They default they, on the loan. They will default on the loan. And if it's a, a, a Richmond bank is gonna end up you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's not a good thing to default on over half a million dollars. <laughs> but, but on the other hand, who is going to donate money now? They've all already been through all the corporations to do the initial failure of a renovation. Now, how, I would hate to be in the shoes of the person that went back to a corporation and say, well, we didn't really do a very good job. And could you throw in three hundred thousand dollars so that we could do it again? Right. You know, you know, you're between a rock and a hard place. If you get rid of these people, you're going to do, do, you're going to cause a lot of heartache for for the financial community in Richmond. But if you don't, we're sitting on uh, just a deter rapidly deteriorating park. Um, wh what are you going to do? Well, and that's kind of one of the things I wanted I wanted to kind of get from you, which is I, I know lots of the folks that I know feel much as you and I do that the current situation in that park, is it's not an improvement. No, no, it's not. And they're not fixing what's broken in that park. So how how do you get how can folks get involved? Like, what do you what do you what would you need people to do? Who are the people that we need to reach out to? You need to reach out to your city council people and say, this is our oldest, most historic park. It's been decimated. Uh, so many trees. To, to give you an idea of how many trees were taken down, um, when they first started the renovation, they put up a fence so you couldn't see in. But, but I noticed, I could hear the chainsaws. I could tell they were cutting trees down. I went to my council person at the time uh, Parker Agilosto. And he went in that day and said, let me see your tree plan. Well, damn, if they did not have a tree plan, they were going in there and saying, well, let's cut that one down. Let's cut that one down. And they got 13 trees down without permits. Now, in order to take a, a healthy, mature tree down or a healthy tree down on a public property in Richmond, you have to file a permit. So they actually went to the planning commission for an ex post facto approval of these tree removals and they were turned down. Now that's unresolved now, but the, the, the good part about that is that they, they had to fill out permits and they destroyed over 576 inches uh, diameter breadth heights of trees which, I mean, one of those trees was an eight foot diameter American elm. Oh, man. Uh, you know, they were all beautiful trees. 
um, and they were all taken down to discourage people of color, mostly from using the park. Um, there is no question to me that the city needs to just completely separate themselves from this bunch of people in this uh, 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 Monroe Park Conservancy, and they, they need to take this park back over. Uh, people need to contact their city council person and say they don't like what's going on and say, go look at the park. Go look at the park and see and walk those pathways. You know, you're a council person. You can walk on there, even though it says it's, it's it, that you can't enter. Um, something has to be done. I feel for the city, the new city council person for the second district, because she's the one that's got to pull the plug. If she pulls the plug, a lot of people aren't going to be happy. The pain will be will be short and sweet, you know, and we can get back to putting this park in order. VCU has no intention of, of stopping their maintenance. You know, the city can continue that. I'm sure that Alice is holding that over their head that VCU will pull out. But even if they did pull out, you know, the city could take care of that park. The city parks department has a budget right? and they have leadership. Um, but it's an eyesore and it's a heartbreak because many of us grew up in that park, saw Bruce Springsteen in that park, came of age in that park. It, it was always <laughs> safe. You know, they used to have things called Kool-Aid Sundays there and they'd have uh, information booths and and bands and uh and cool people you know i was just a kid we used to ride the bus down from the west end because we were too young to drive but we were welcomed by the vcu students which were very cool people and and we got to listen to live music and, and it really shaped a lot of people um none of that now none of no, that now. it's 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 sad it's it's really nothing near what it used to be and and I don't it, since I've been back in Richmond, I've not seen any any forward progress to fix these problems. No, mm -mm. and that's so. No, I so, mean it. We're looking at a year over a year that those uh, pathways have been condemned. We're looking yeah. at six months or more that the fountain hasn't worked. Yeah, so. Well, that's good. I, I think we're just about out of time. I just, I think it, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of inform us of what's going on. And because it, it compare, I remember the park when I was here in the eighties, you know, and, and it was a vibrant, diverse place. It was gorgeous space. I never felt unsafe there. And it was yeah. an important part of the community. I appreciate your effort. And I think there are a lot of folks here who want to get that back to what it was. We have a, we have an obligation to, to care for that park. And uh, it's just too important to, uh, to let go. No, absolutely. Really. And, and again, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you've done, especially for the park, but also for other aspects of the city of Richmond. You're a very involved community guy and, and, well, Michael, thank you for that. But uh, yeah, thank you. So hopefully we'll get this, we'll get some folks involved and, and they'll reach out to their city council people and we can start to turn this in the other direction and maybe the conservancy will go away quietly. Probably not, but. Um... There's going to be a big bang when it goes, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, you know, money talks in Richmond, you know, yeah. it has a lot of power. But the community has power because we have the vote and we need to remember that. We need to remember that, that, that if enough of us band together, uh, if enough of us care about that part, we can, we can make a change and we can put it back in the hands of the Richmond Parks Department and uh, Director Chris Frelke can take care of that part. So we need to start putting trees back in that park. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Todd, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, Michael, thank you for having me so much. Yeah. Well, this has been another Consults Over Coffee. I'm Dr. Michael Jones. This has been Todd Woodson. And let's work to get Monroe Park back to what it ought to be.